Hello everybody, one more time. My name is Alex Centeno with Mercados Interactive Partners, located in the Research Triangle area in North Carolina. And um, in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at something pretty cool, which is, uh, let's say that you have a cool image and uh, it was shot in an overcast day or with not a particularly interesting sky. And so let's say you need to change that sky in post-production. And uh, of course, that's an ideal case for using digital media. When you really need to change um, the way that a photograph or an image has been taken in the first place. So we're going to be changing the sky. Of course, this technique applies to whatever you need to change. It can be a background. It can be uh, something in a t-shirt. It can be a logo. It can be something like that. But usually uh, you can use it. Uh, for sky. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. And before we begin, as always, we're going to be taking a look at our sponsor for today. Mercados is a strategic web studio located in the Research Triangle area in North Carolina. Our focus is to help businesses of all sizes make more money through the use of a strategic website design, custom digital media development, and web marketing. For more information, you can contact us at 888-525-8117 or visit us on the web at Mercados.com. Mercados, creatively smart. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and I have uh, the end product here so you can take a look at what we're going to be trying to accomplish today. Uh, and so I'm going to get rid of uh, all my layers just to start and show you the technique. So I have uh, two layers here, uh, one with a tower, and I've called that layer tower, and then one with our sky. Uh, you can see that basically it's just like a regular sky. Um, and both of these images have been taken from stock exchange which is s x h dot um, x uh, i'm sorry s x c dot h u you should see the link below um, and that's a great um, resource to have uh, open source images for your project so uh, check that out uh, thank you for providing those images to them Alrighty, so we have these two images and what we're going to do is we're going to mask the sky out of this image, allowing the sky to show uh, below here. So the first thing we're going to do is just pretty much uh, set up our tower layer at the very top and go to our channels. I'm going to also get rid of my previous mask so that I show you how to do them. So one of the things that I want you to notice here is that the sky is blue and the rest of my image is pretty much yellow, which is a great uh, way to start because uh, yellow and blue are opposites to each other. So um, if we were to examine our channels with command 3, 4, or 5, uh, respectively for read, uh, red, <laughs> green, and blue, then we would see that the red channel has like a, a good degree of contrast. However, this part looks a little bit darker and so it would be difficult for us to mask this. Uh, in green happens something similar but of course in blue because of the properties that the sky is very blue and consistently blue then we have a marked contrast between what we want to mask out and what we want to keep. And so we're going to be using the blue as the starting channel for our mask. So what we are going to do, grab it, drop it here and create a copy of our blue channel. Let's rename this mask just for organization purposes and uh, that's a tip for new digital media designers just try to make your best effort to keep things organized because as your projects progress and they're a little bit more difficult especially for example web design um, when we're designing websites it's very very um, difficult to deal with let's say a hundred or 150 different layers so you know, probably goes a long way to try to make a little effort to name your layers and channels properly when you're actually working with them. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is Command L to bring our levels panel. And we're going to move this sliders 
you're basically trying to increase that contrast that is already there. All right, then hit OK. And so you can see now that pretty much this is white. And we have everything here in black, although it has certain little dots of white all over the place. And so to get rid of that, I'm going to just use my pen tool and kind of create a path here around, trying to protect my, um, my skies uh, as much as possible. And of course, you would do this in your project as carefully as possible, getting closer to the edge. Uh, but here, since I'm just like demonstrating the technique, I'm like not doing it as carefully as you would. All right, now that I have the path, I'm going to go to paths. And there I have the path that I just created with the pen. And I can just simply click Command, click, and that's going to create a selection for me from that work path. Go back to your channels. And now that this is a selection, then I can just go ahead and paint with black. So I can reverse this, have a brush that is with black color, normal mode, and opacity at 100%. And I can just freely, without feeling like I'm going to mess up anything, I can just paint on top here. Because it's only going to paint, of course, inside of the part that is the tower here, the building. Uh, so that's looking great and uh, so let's ensure that this is white and this is uh, black by uh, making sure that we have this channels like so uh, getting rid of everything uh, other than black and white so pretty much we're creating a threshold uh, the other thing to note here is that the sky is actually white and the tower is in black and really uh, the part that is transparent what we need is to mask out the sky so we need to reverse this and to do so we're gonna click command I and that reverses the mask and after that we're just gonna select it by command clicking on top of our thumbnail here in our mask and then simply selecting our RGBs all right and so we have selected what we need great stuff now we're here, let's just go ahead and create here our mask. So add vector mask, you're going to click over there. And you can see here that it added uh, a layer for us, um, a mask, a mask layer, I'm sorry. All right, great. So that's the first part of this. And so let's enable our sky to see it. So it's looking a lot better. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move my sky upwards so that it's a little bit more aligned to the horizon line here. So it looks a little bit more dramatic there. All right, that's looking really good. Um, and so before I continue, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up my mask. So to do so, I'm going to select my mask here and go to Select, Refine Mask. And I get this little Refine Mask pane here. And what I'm going to do is Shift my edge a little bit and if I go closer here you can see that I have some blue left from my previous mask and so I can shift my previous mask and smooth out the edge I can even show a little bit of my radius I can do a smart radius if I want to doesn't seem like it's doing a fantastic job with that. So you have to play with it to make sure that you get like the result that you're looking for. But as you can see, we have a lot less blue showing up here. And that's exactly what we want it. And so this seems pretty good. Let's go ahead and increase a little bit of our contrast there at the border and hit OK. Great stuff. All right, it's looking pretty good. One thing you can see is after we did that, this actually starts showing up here because we shifted our our edge. So with the black brush, sorry, with the white brush, you can go ahead and paint back that part so that you don't end up without uh, that edge. All right, great. 
Perfect. So it's looking already great. Let's make this sky a little bit more dramatic. So what we're going to do is simply add um, a little bit of um, contrast to this. So the first part of adding that contrast is unselective, unselective contrast by adding a adjustment layer curves. And we're just going to increase contrast by doing the traditional S shape curve in the whole spot. That's looking pretty good. S shape curve. You're probably familiar with this by by now if you've seen several of our videos. So that we're going to add um, a new layer and fill it up with a gray color. So 50% gray. And let's go ahead and fill up that a layer. Next thing that we're going to do is change the blending mode to overlay. So nothing has changed so far. So we have that layer there. And then now we can affect it by burning and dodging exactly there. So if we uh, use burn tool uh, and we affect on top, then as you can see, those areas are going to get darker in our image. And uh, I'm using midtones exposure at 50%. All right, but of course I can define whatever I want depending on the effect that I'm looking for. And then after that, I can just use my dodge tool midtones 50%. But now this time is dodging, so I am effectively increasing light or exposure at certain points. And so what this is doing is like. It is not a general contrast anymore, like the S curve. It's now a detailed, specific contrast where I want it. So, for example, this area here, it has a little cloud that is a little darker there. So I can increase how how much of that contrast we see by darkening the cloud and increasing the light around the cloud. And that, of course, is going to make our sky look angry, as angry as possible. So a really dramatic sky. All right, great stuff. So we have that. Now what we're going to do, after we've done that, is we're going to add a um, either a photo filter or a LUT, L-U-T, on top of both of our layers now so that we do uh, sell our effect a little bit better but before we do that let's go ahead here to this one and let's um let me give you a little trick here we're going to blur our edge here so that's going to improve our transition from uh from the real background to uh, our new background so all I'm doing is like with the blur tool, I'm just blurring the line there so that it looks um, not as sharp. And so it sells a little bit better the effect that uh, it was taken uh, with this guy to begin with. And I'm doing it like uh, not being extremely careful, but of course, in your personal projects or projects for clients, you want to do this extremely, extremely well, well done. All right, so that's the first touch. Then we're going to add our color lookup or a LUT. All right, and so let's click here to horror blue. And uh, there you have it. Like now you can see the combination, the effect together. Now it sells a lot better the effect because it, it almost feels like they belong together, that they were taken together. Final touches, of course, uh, our uh, gradient vignette. So I'm going to select the vignette effect, like so, which is basically a gradient that is radial and reversed. Let's set it to about, uh, about there, 160. It looks just kind of burning the edges here a little bit to make it even more dark. And that's pretty much it. So that's the technique. As you can see, we have a nice edge, 
course I did this like a little bit fast and I'm just showing you the technique uh, but uh, a lot better than uh, what we begin with so let's take a look here by disabling some of this to see how it looked before all right and I'm gonna create here a layer with this so that we can see it before and after so that's after this is before this is after this is before <laughs> one more time this is after so a lot a lot drama added to that image right there so hopefully this has been extremely helpful for you um, again my name is Alex Centeno with Mercados Interactive Partners before I let you go let me just um, feature a product I'm gonna try to do that every time that we have a video now I just feature an interesting product or service that I'm using at the time uh, for those aspiring digital media artists so uh, in this case it's gonna be Stadler Mars Lumograph pencils just Sometimes you see them like this. Sometimes you see them in bigger sets. This one is just a six uh, six pencil uh, set. And uh, this are just regular pencils that you can use for sketching and drawing. And it, they're really, really good. I mean, it's fantastic for graphic designers, especially when you're doing web design to uh, be able to sketch things out and do things by hand before you actually touch the computer. It's just fantastic. So. Uh, if you're trying to do web design, don't don't think that you can just go into the computer and do everything. Honestly, it's just better to start with paper uh, so that the ideas are uh, easy to manipulate and just that uh, you can get rid of all the bad ideas really right away. Uh, and to do, uh, to do so in an effective way, you need a good set of pencils. Um, of course, if, if you don't have those pencils available, you can use any pencil. It, regular 2B pencil will work but ideally you want a, a, a group of pencils that are going to give you different values and those pencils that's what they do they they go from lighter to darker and so you can use different sections for the different websites and different media. so anyways hope that this has been helpful I, again I welcome your comments below in the YouTube uh, comments box uh, don't forget to subscribe thank you again and have a nice day Thank you.